if you speak, unfortunately, to people who are you know, in their late 80s, 90s, perhaps you know, they've not got much life left, and ask them, okay, what's your one regret, or what's the one thing you do differently? Almost unanimously, what everyone says is that they wish they'd lived their life more purposefully. It was, you know, apparent to me, if I looked to my father, looked to previous generations, that you were really defined by uh, your work. And I was pretty aggressively pursuing my, uh, my career, uh, which led me quite quickly to an ambition to move to New York, uh, because that's where the bigger jobs were going to be, it was going to have more influence. A significant event then happened with the, uh, with the birth of my, uh, my eldest son. George uh, was born with some pretty significant complications. The brain, our most complex organ, is the least understood, uh, and epilepsy. Many people, you know, would say, oh, well, he'll grow out of it. Um, you know, I've got friends who've grown out of it. And sure, and thankfully, many children, uh, many adults do grow out of epilepsy. But there are a uh, population uh, that unfortunately don't and will have lifelong complications. And for George, that's left him now. He's 12 years old. He has a mental age of uh, about three. He can say a handful of words. Uh, we hold on to those words dearly, and every day, every week, that he learns a new word is a celebration for, for us. It's a totally different celebration to we thought we would be having with a, with a 12-year-old, but it, it's hugely important to, to us. When you see your child, um, who's 12, 18 months old, bouncing into hospital in the back of an ambulance week after week, and having some very serious conversations with physicians and nurses in the NHS at two, three in the morning, it starts to make you think about, okay, what is important here? And that's when I really went on, I think, a, a personal journey about what is it that's really important to me and what am I here to do? What is the impact that, that I can have? I think purpose to me very simply means having a crystal clear vision on what it is you are here personally to do uh, and you know, why you exist, frankly. I don't see it being any more than, than that, um, but it is hugely, hugely important. And frankly, it drives everything I do, whether that be here at Pfizer or, uh, or in my personal life uh, as well. When you get really clear on your own uh, personal uh, motivations, your own purpose, um, everything becomes that much easier. Uh, it, it's about transformation, not tinkering. Uh, and it's those three words that really drive me. And what I mean by that is you know, my, my running, for instance. You know, I'm a serious runner. I don't tinker around the edges of running sort of once or twice a week or so. I, I run to, to compete when I come to work. I, I, you know, I want to be a central actor. I want to be a, a central lead in, in this, this organization to, to create the, the change. It's that transformation that, that really drives me. And I, I think it's exciting to tackle that full on and go for big change rather than messing around in the edges. The, the moment in time when we were having the challenges with George uh, reaffirmed to me that Pfizer was the organisation that I wanted to stay with. I just think of the incredible impact that we can have on society. If we get our purpose right, we're going to be able to transform the lives of millions of patients across the UK. Without purpose, frankly, you will not achieve the aims of, of your organisation. You've got to really dig deep into the heart of the company and why does that company exist? For us, it, it's about changing lives. When we talk about putting patients first, we expect society to judge us on that. The challenges that we all face are far too big, they're far too complex for any one party to uh, to solve in the, in the future. It's gonna require us all coming together, certainly those of us that have a common goal uh, and partner in a way that perhaps we haven't done in the past.